Right, so we are now live on Facebook. Um, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, firstly, if our current students could introduce themselves, please. So if you go in the order, um, I've got my screen. So Candela, Tim, and then Anna, just introduce your Hi. year subject. <laughs> Thanks. I'm Candela and I'm, uh, well, I just finished second year engineering. Hi guys, I'm Tim. Uh, I just finished second year history and politics and I'm also JCR co-president. Hi, I'm Anna. I just finished second year medicine. Great, thanks so much. Um, so firstly, obviously, we've had quite a lot of questions about choosing a college. So firstly, why did you guys choose St. John's? Well, I chose it because it's one of the biggest colleges, which I thought would give me the opportunity to meet lots of people of all different sorts and backgrounds and people that would like match my interests and stuff like this. For me, it was mostly the same thing. I think I chose St. John's uh, because it was central, um, very big, and uh, it was also very close to, this, it had very close sports pitches, um, and I played football, so I was very keen on having a college with grounds that were nearby. Yeah, it's that kind of similar reasons to Tim and Candela, um, but I came on the open day and I kind of talked to the people at John's and they kind of just seemed the most welcoming and friendly and it sort of seemed like the place I wanted to be. Great. Well, hopefully we can all be those people for the year 12s watching the open days now. <laughs> um, so next, um, St. John's and I think Cambridge in general sometimes has a bit of a reputation about maybe being a bit posh. Um, would you agree with that? Um, and would you say that John's is quite, quite a diverse environment or what are your thoughts on that in general? Not at all. Like, it's completely diverse. There's people of all sorts. And yeah, no, I don't even like at John's and Cambridge overall, you can meet all kinds of people that you can get along with. Like it's not true at all. 100%. I think it's John's and Cambridge more generally have a reputation of being quite elitist and very posh. I think um, as an international student, I was a bit afraid of that too. And um, like, I mean, it hasn't been the case at all. You have all sorts of people here. Um, people from around the world really is. The environment is very welcoming, very friendly, um, and you shouldn't be afraid of being posh people. Because, I mean, there are a few posh people, obviously, but even, even then, like, it's not bad. It's not a bad thing. They're nice people too. Like, you can get along with everyone, here, so it's great. Yeah, I think exactly the same as what Tim and Candela have said. Everyone sort of come from all these different backgrounds and sort of everyone's very welcoming of everyone from anywhere. And yeah, it's a really nice atmosphere. Great, thanks so much. Um, so next, moving on to sort of the application system, um, what sort of stuff did you guys do to prepare for your applications? So particularly preparing for your personal statement and how did you approach the personal statement? Um, I'd say so for, when it comes, uh, so for history and politics, I, I, did his, I took history in, in France in high school. Um, so obviously I had some knowledge there, but I did a lot of reading over the summer. Um, so I did a lot of, yeah, I read about stuff that interested me, especially so I focused on American politics because I grew up in the United States, as you can see the flag behind me. Um, so I read a lot about American politics and um, I, I read a history book, um, I don't remember what it's called, um, but I read a few books and I think that really helped me get started from my ideas, the personal statements. Um, what I would recommend is to not try and demonstrate too much in your personal statement because it's quite short. So I really focused on a couple books that I really liked um, and a few things that I had done, um, which I thought would be relevant to why I wanted to do history and politics today. Um, and then I focused on those few uh, things and elaborated on those. But yeah, mostly reading essentially for my degree. For me, it's basically just focusing on the stuff. That obviously, if you're applying here you, and you choose a subject, you like really love that subject and that's what you have to show. So for me, it was getting like all of the things that I've done and that I've read and that interested me that related to my subject and getting them like nicely in there. Um, I guess for medicine it's slightly different because like you want to talk about why you want to be a doctor as well so I kind of talked about a bit of the work experience I'd done and like volunteering but like you don't have to have done sort of work experience and sort of they understand how difficult it is to get 
so sort of focusing on kind of stuff you've done like volunteering sort of maybe with children like tutoring there's like so many things you can do to sort of reflect on why you'd be a good doctor and then because it's sort of like Cambridge and they've got quite a big science element to the course I kind of talked a bit about why I like science and why I wanted to kind of wanted a course that had more science in it. That's great thank you. Um, so moving on a little bit through the application process um, obviously um, all or most subjects now have um, admissions assessments how did you prepare for your admissions assessments? Um, Anna, I've had one particularly about the BMAT and how, how on earth you dealt with the BMAT. So shall I start with you for this one, if that's okay? Yeah, sure. So um, for the BMAT, kind of there are three sections and sort of the first section is kind of like maths and comprehension. So for that, I kind of just did loads of practice papers. Like there are like quite a lot of years on the website that you can just go through and sort of to practice practice their techniques for their science section it's sort of like there's a specification so I kind of went through and made sure like I recapped my GCSE knowledge because my physics is a bit rusty and sort of it needed a bit of brushing up and then kind of for the essay section I just sort of practiced writing ethical essays and sort of to see kind of and just my I guess top tip would just be to go through the practice papers and just try and do as much as you can to sort of get familiarity with questions. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically the same for, so I don't know how it is today now for history and politics, but when I took it, I had two sections on the admissions test. It was one multiple choice um, um, exam, and then one was an essay style uh, exam. And we had an hour to do both. I think the most important thing to do for those um, is to just do timed practice tests. Um, the hardest bit is to finish it on time. So like the, the, the the exam in itself isn't particularly difficult, like it's not meant to be super challenging in terms of your knowledge, but it really tests your ability to work hard under pressure and work well in, in a timed environment. So I think doing practice tests in a timed uh, environment is the best thing to do. That's what I did at least. Yeah, the engineering one, the engineering one is also quite similar. It's very time pressured. So basically what I did is you have a list of contents just check that you know and you've learned most of them which if you've done eight levels at least it'll be the case then you practice, practice papers so you get I just the style of the question how else you have to go and I don't know the questions that are worth answering and which ones aren't and that kind of stuff great thank you um, so obviously one of the big things about the um, Cambridge application process is the interview and I think that's one of the things that people tend to be the most scared for. Um, do you just want to talk a little bit about your interview process, so like how you prepared and how you found it and just talking, with, talking us through your interview experience? So for me, as I said, I, did, I do engineering. I had three interviews. The first one was kind of like personal about you. So I didn't prepare much for that one. Just have like, not rehearsed, but like an idea of things you can say about yourself and like the personal statement, what, what you said and like what proves you're like that kind of thing so that you know, like how to guide yourself through that. And then I had two academic interviews. For one of them, I had, uh, to answer a question that they had sent me before, which I'm, I mean, this might not be the case anymore, but this is for me. So I made sure I knew how to do that question really well. I made sure I got it right. Um, and I also tried to think a bit of like how they could ask further on that or where the question could go next to see, like to prepare a bit for that. And the last interview, I had to prepare a PowerPoint, a presentation on a topic of, of interest. And I did, um, well, something that related to my work experience and I had to explain it and then they asked further on that. So just make sure you know, like, stuff about what you've done and like the fields that you're interested in that you can like talk a bit about and explore further in case they asked. Yeah, I think it was, uh, I think John was, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Gaia, but I believe everyone gets three interviews and John's just quite nice because they really do take the time to, to meet you. Um, and the first one, at least for me, it was also a, a personal interview um, where my now tutor, who's like the fellow who takes care of our well-being here, um, he interviewed me and it was really not subject specific. It was just to see um, who I was, what I like doing and why I was applying here, basically. So that was really nice to start off with that. And then... 
I had two subject specific interviews, so one in history and one in politics. And they were both quite intense, but at the same time, um, the interviewees really are not here to, they're not here to, they're here to see what you can do and, and how you think, and they're really not here to trap you or anything. Like, I felt that there was, the, the, um, the environment was really positive and it helped me feel comfortable. Um, I think the best way to prepare, definitely know everything you mentioned in your personal statement, because a lot of their starting points are taken from your personal statement. Because they want to see what interests you, what brings you here specifically. They're not going to prepare some generic questions they ask everyone. So yeah, bear in mind that their talking points are going to come from your statements or any essays that you submitted beforehand. And then usually it, it becomes a discussion, at least in humanities. They kind of start from the statement or the essays that you send. And then based on what you reply, they kind of discuss and try to further your points. And they'll try to challenge your, your assumptions and your arguments. And... There's no, if you, if you realize halfway through that maybe you said something wrong, it's completely fine to say, oh, actually in light of this, um, maybe that was not correct. And as long as, as long as you treat the interview as a conversation and as, as a, um, a learning space too, I think it'll, it'll go well. Um, I think, yeah, they, they really want to see if you're teachable. So if you take it as a learning, a learning experience, um, you'll get more, more, more out of it, I think. Um, so I also had three interviews. My first was kind of like everyone else was quite a general interview, but the medicine that meant kind of talking about like why I wanted to be a doctor, some of the work experience and volunteering I'd done, kind of just leaving off stuff that I put in my personal statement. And then the second two were sort of more scientific based. Um, for the second one, we kind of, they had like two problems that we kind of worked through. Um, and for that, I kind of learned, sort of made sure that I knew all my like A-level um, biology and chemistry for that um so that everything was up to date um but sort of as you went along they kind of guide you so it's completely okay not to know the answer to something and as long as you're kind of thinking out loud and sort of sharing your thought process so that they can help you when you kind of get stuck and then for my third interview it was kind of this um you got this passage to read beforehand and then they kind of asked you questions on that but i didn't really know how to prepare for that other than just doing a bit of science for the other one Okay, brilliant. Thanks so much. Um, just to clarify on the point about um, the interviews, it's not always three interviews, but it can be sort of two to three. Um, but yeah, thank you. Um, so moving on to when you actually started at Cambridge, I um, had a few questions about sort of Freshers Week. Um, firstly, how easy did you find it to fit in? Um, and what's sort of the community like at St John's? I mean, Freshers Week is organized in such a way that it makes it extremely easy to, to meet people. You've got all sorts of activities. And, I mean, this year will be a bit different, but we'll make sure it's still very easy to meet people. It, it's just all sorts of, sort of activities where you get to like introduce yourself to all kinds of people, start making friends. You live with other freshers as well, so you can start off from there. I mean, I was surprised by how easy it was because I was 17 and I was like, well, I can't go to clubs or anything like that. How am I going to like meet people? Everyone is going to be going out and I'm going to be staying in my room. But no, it's, it's, everyone is so welcoming. Everyone is there. No one knows anyone. So you're just all there to make friends. So it's completely fine. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's, it's really easy. I think the colleges make it really easy to meet people because we're in small bubbles. Um, and so the freshers intake that we have to, that we interact with in Freshers Week is quite small. So we get to know everyone quite quickly. Um, I thought it was quite easy to um, move in, to meet people, to make friends. I would say that, that the people you meet in Freshers Week are not necessarily going to be your friends that you'll keep throughout university. Like you do change um, and you shouldn't feel pressured to find your best friend like the first day of university because that I mean that wasn't the case for me at least um, I think it isn't the case for most people um, so you definitely meet a lot of people everyone is in the same mindset of wanting to meet new people and make friends um, but as things settle down and as you join societies and, and firm starts I felt like for me at least it's when I started finding my friends in my friendship group. Yeah I mean I was quite nervous coming into sort of Cambridge because I'd never sort of lived away from home before but kind of as soon as you get there there's so much going on and sort of there are so many opportunities to meet people and sort of there are so many different like activities for people like completely different people so there's definitely something that like you'll enjoy and kind of I got into that and sort of made friends and it was like really easy to settle in. 
Great, thank you. Um, we had a specific question about being an international student um, and starting as an international student. Sort of, how did you find that? How much support is there from the college? Um, at, like sort of moving from um, the different country, et cetera, and just settling in? I thought it was the, the difficult part for me was to was getting used to the new culture because I'd never been or resided in the UK before. Um, and at the undergrad level, Cambridge is still majority like a majority of UK students. So for international students, um, I, it might be a bit strange if you've never lived in the UK before or if English is your second language. Um, but I do think that college was very supportive. I think that um, the academics are very international here too, so you don't really feel that too much when you go to lectures and stuff. Um, I guess in the day to day, it might be slightly new, um, but it's definitely not hard to get used to it and to also meet people who come from the same country as you or internationals as well. Um, so like, I, I find like I have two groups of friends, one kind of more international that I, that I met um, throughout the year or in different events across the university and then more British people that I interact with in sports or societies in the college. Um, but it's not, I wouldn't be, don't be too worried as an international student that you won't fit in because first of all, there are quite a few international students here. And second of all, like you do get along and you do make friends with British people, even if you're not British or English is your second language or you've never lived here before. Don't be worried. Yeah, for me, I mean, I'm from Spain. I did study A-levels in the UK, so I was already used to like all this English, like ways of living and stuff that Tim is talking about but yeah for me at least it wasn't an issue everyone as I said is so welcoming obviously whether you're international or not we've got international freshers week for freshers that are international have to arrive a bit earlier like it's perfectly fine don't worry about it great thank you um so would you guys mind talking a bit about the pastoral care system um so just sort of what kind of pastoral care is there um, at John's? Is it kind of a supportive environment? Um, yeah. So um, at John's, you, like, you have loads of different resources. Um, like the college really does take care of you. Um, it, it is their number one priority, really to take care of the students and make sure everyone is well and, and happy and, and able to live a fulfilling life here in Cambridge. Um, you have access to your tutor, which is basically um, a, a, a fellow who takes care of your well-being and takes care of you on, a, on an individual basis and knows you really well. And so you meet with them as often as you want. Uh, it can be every week or twice a term, or once a term. Um, you also have uh, the chaplain who, well, basically he, he, he takes care of um, the religious aspect in college, but is also really open to discuss with students regardless of their religious background or beliefs. And he really takes care of your welfare as well. Um, and then the nurse is there as well. Uh, we and we have I think we're, the college is working on getting a mental health specialist um, next year too. Um, I believe. Wait, if someone is thinking but, of someone else, please. Ask. There's also um, the college counselor who comes in a couple of times a week that people can kind of make appointments. So, um, but yeah, the nurse in the college, uh, the nurse also will deal with mental health stuff as well and check if I'm not. She's pretty much open most days a week, so you can pop in or book an appointment, so it's really convenient. Great, thanks. Um, sort of a follow up to that, we had a specific question about um, how, like, whether St John's is a supportive environment for women um, and sort of how safe you feel with it as, as a college. Um, Anna, do you want to answer? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I can go. Um, yeah, yeah, so, um, uh, I mean, I find it quite supportive. We have sort of the women's officer on the JCR who runs sort of lots of consent, um, John's sort of um, events and kind of a campaign to sort of um, ensure that kind of that kind of is, that that is addressed. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I definitely feel sort of supportive in the colleges sort of willing to sort of um, step in if there is a problem. Um, I'm not sure what your thoughts are, Daniela. Yeah, no, I agree. The college is very supportive. I've, I mean, you can talk to anyone about it. You can talk to your tutor. I've talked to the nurse about stuff like this before. Like everyone is very supportive and will point you towards the right direction if you happen to have any of these issues. But luckily, they're not common at all. 
Great, thank you. Um, so again, on the sort of college life side of things, um, we've had a few questions about accommodation. So would you be able to talk a bit about how accommodation works, how you find your accommodation, um, like whether you like it or not, um, just what it's like in general? I think in, in Cambridge, in, in John specifically, we're really lucky because we have really great accommodation. Um, the college is huge, so it, it allows all undergrads, it guarantees all undergrads accommodation, um, either in college or in nearby hostels uh, for the entirety of the degree. And um, it's, like the rooms are really nice, they're spacious. Um, the rooms in college are, I mean, all the rooms are really central in the city, so that's great. Like we're close to everything, be it lecture halls or the city center. Um, accommodation is relatively cheap compared to other colleges, like we're slightly below average, which is good too. Um, I think it's, it's just overall great value. And for the price that you pay, you get access to a gym, uh, two gyms actually, uh, you get free laundry, you get um, a better service, which is basically people who, housekeeping who clean your rooms um, once a week and clean all the communal spaces that you share. Um, so overall, I think accommodation is definitely one of the strong points that John's has. So I guess we could say a bit about like the types of rooms as a fresher, for example, you can live in cribs where you can have individual rooms and then large kitchens or communal spaces that you share between four people. Or you can live in Northern Chapel Court where you can like share a kitchen and a toilet with like a set mate. You have like separate rooms, but you just share a kitchen and a toilet. Then, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. You can get individual rooms and like the higher years or double sets, where again, you share a kitchen and, and a toilet. I don't know, all rooms are great. So it's up to your personal choice, really. Um, I'm, I, another great thing about John's is that you can kind of get guaranteed accommodation on site for, for three years. Um, I, I mean, this year I chose to live off site in a house, which is really nice because I got to live with sort of a group of really good friends. But if you want to, you can live in college for three years, which is sort of not something that all colleges offer. So that's sort of a really good thing. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so another sort of college life question, I guess, um, which is, do you, like, how do you find like interaction with other colleges? Do you find that you're mostly socialising within people within your own college? Or do you find that it's quite a um, kind of environment where you can go out and meet people from, from other colleges as well? I mean, most of my friends, I have to admit, are from Jones, but you also have the chance to meet lots of people at your department. If you do any university level sports or societies, like there's plenty of room to like get to know people in the whole of Cambridge. I think it's very much up to your personal choice. Um, last year, I interacted mostly with people from the college, but that's because I chose to. Um, and I had all my friends um, be either on the football team or in people that are around me in college. Um, I think as a humanities student, you don't meet as many people from your faculty just because you have fewer contact hours. Um, you're in lecture halls as opposed to labs and you don't do practical. So you don't actually interact with people as much um, faculty wise, but uh, I definitely met more people from the university this year because I took part in university sport, which is a great way to meet people outside of your college. So I think meeting people outside of college is, it's definitely doable if you get involved in like university wide activities, societies or sports, um, or if you're in a, a, a faculty or departments in which they can have more interaction with the fellow students. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I, um, most of my friends are at John's, um, but then I kind of have a few friends from medicine from like labs and dissection and stuff. And also like I said, I have a few friends from uni swimming as well. So there are definitely ways to get, to make friends outside of college if you want to, but equally you don't have to, it's kind of what you want. Great, thank you. Um, a couple of you mentioned university sports, which is good because it leads on quite nicely to my next question. Someone asked whether academics at Johns or at Cambridge normally like takes over the social side of things, or if you still find like you've got time to do other stuff. Um, I know that you definitely do have time to do other stuff. So do you want to talk us through a bit about the kind of extracurricular activities that you do um, and also just generally the social side of things that aren't the academics? I mean, personally, last year, I didn't do any extracurricular issues. I was worried, like, probably the person that asked this, that I'm not going to have enough time to, like, 
study or do my work and, and have a good like yeah get a good grade but then like i realized like my college dad had told me well college dad is like you get a person in the year above to like look over you and stuff he had told me that they had arrived to like do stuff because like in Cambridge you'll just end up using all the free time you have like to do your academic work so it's better to have the least free time possible so that you have it that you do the work in a more condensed way so this year I went with Tim for JCR presence and there's definitely time to do all sorts of stuff like we still have fun we still go to hall for dinner we still go out sometimes and everything's going well so yeah do as much as you can and as much as you want and you'll be fine yeah i definitely second that i think um so i i, I last year when i joined i played football with the college team um which wasn't too time consuming i think I, it was like two or three times a week uh, and then we had socials as well on the side um and i think that was I was, I was, I took part in various societies across the university, but they weren't really time consuming. And it was, it was just for me to discover new things here. Um, but this year I really got involved way more. So I, I'm asking that I said we were both JCR presidents, which is quite time consuming, which was really rewarding and really fun. Um, and I also uh, do university boxing. And so I train six times a week with the team. So it's quite time consuming. Um, and I also, I continue to play football as well. So I've added quite a lot of stuff on my plate this year, um, but it hasn't, I was a bit, I was wondering whether or not it'd be too much for me. Uh, and at times it was a bit much, but I don't regret any of it at all. Um, and next year I'm going to continue doing that as well. So I think you definitely have time as long as you, I mean, as long as you, you, you have time to do what you want to do essentially. So if you want to focus on your academics, you can. Um, and if you want to do more things like I did, then it's fine too. Um, and like, as long as you get what you want out of Cambridge, I think that's what matters the most. Yeah, I also do quite a few extracurriculars. So I'm vice president of JCR, so that's sort of a big time commitment. But then I'm also involved with um, the second swimming team, which is a really great way to meet people, as I said before. But also, like once a year, we sort of do a varsity against Oxford. So that's sort of a really fun thing to get involved with. Um, which sadly we lost this year, but hopefully we'll win next year. Um, and then uh, I'm also involved sort of with John's Med Sock, so that's sort of a great way to sort of put on events with the other medics within college and sort of get together with all three years of undergraduate medicine and kind of meet more people. So there's definitely time to get involved with as much stuff as you want, but equally, as Tom, Tim said, you don't have to do anything if you don't, right, if you prefer to study and don't want to. It's probably worth adding that um, usually in Easter term when we have exams, uh, most societies and activities kind of die down. So I mean, at least it's, it, for most university sport and all the societies that we have in college, we don't usually have that much going on in Easter terms. So you definitely have time to catch up on any work that you didn't do in the first two terms um, before your exams, or you have time to like yeah, go over all this stuff well and, and still do really well in your exams, despite having had a really busy first two terms. So that's also something to add. Great, thank you. Um, so moving on more to the academic side of things, um, firstly, how big a step up did you find it from sort of A-levels or equivalent? And what was the biggest difference between um, sort of sixth form college life and um, university life? I mean, I found it quite, quite a decent like step. Like it's definitely harder. Like one of the biggest differences, like we all know this happens you go from being like probably one of the smartest kids at your school and suddenly like you have to work hard to like keep everyone in like keep at the same level as everyone else but it's also extremely rewarding you learn so much so it's definitely worth it and yeah i don't what was the second part of the question um what was the di biggest difference between um sort of sixth form life and university life I mean, definitely the freedom, like we have lectures. No one is going to check if you go to lectures. I mean, you should go to lectures, but um, I guess also like supervisions, independent learning, how they're taught, how you are, like they push you. It's not just to like pass this exam and get this grade, it's more to like push yourself and see how you're thinking. And it's just a different style of teaching, I would say. I think it's much more, the biggest difference for me was going from um, a 40 hour a week in high school where I was taught everything to 
um, having less than 10 contact hours per week and having to do all my work on my own. Um, I think at least in the humanities, it's very different from like the sciences because we have very few contact hours. So it's really easy to, uh, I mean, especially if you, like some people don't go to lectures at all. So some people just don't have any contact hours except for their supervisions and they do all their work on their own in the library. Um, so I think the biggest difference for me was, yeah, going from a very taught environment to one where I was learning on my own and reading books and spending a lot of time in the library. Um, but I think it, it's, it's something you get used to. And at the same time, it's also quite beneficial because it allows you to really focus on the things that interest you the most, as opposed to having this like set curriculum, which you have to, to follow. Um, so I think independent learning might seem a bit daunting and but at the same time, it does allow you to focus on the, the, the topics that you like the most. And then the supervisions are great. Supervisions are the one-on-one -on -one teaching that you have or like the small group teaching that you have here in Cambridge. And those really allow you to like go deeper into the subtopics that interest you. Um, you write an essay for each supervision that you have. So you go over your essay as well. Um, you get feedback from an academic. So it's, it's really, a, you, you, you have a really steep learning curve here and it's like for always stimulated to learn more and so and it's, it's, it's I don't know it's just great yeah I mean I found it a bit of a step up but that was I think just purely because there were quite a few more contact hours because I kind of had labs which I didn't have before um so I kind of I'd have I'll have about like two lectures a day and then maybe depending on the day I might have a lab in the lab or dissection in the afternoon but I guess even though it kind of was a big step up in work it kind of was sort of more what I wanted to be studying because at the end of it I get to become a doctor so even though it is a bit more work I enjoy it a lot more than kind of some of the stuff I did at A levels so it's kind of more manageable because you actually are kind of enjoying what you're doing and getting to do what you want to do so Great, that sort of links into um, my next question which is for you specifically Anna which is how you find the medicine course um, and how you find how you chose the Cambridge course um, compared to other universities that tend to be quite different um, and specifically whether the lack of patient contact is um, frustrating or whether you're enjoying it or yeah, do you want to just talk a little bit about about how you chose this course? So um, I mean I chose Cambridge because I really liked the sort of like three year pre-clinical and then three year sort of clinical divide um, which I found, thought was quite useful because um, for the universities where you kind of start clinical from week kind of one I sort of would feel a bit like incompetent going in and sitting there and so I like the fact that you sort of do sort of two three two years of science and then a third year BSc before you kind of go into that so you can make the most of it. Um, I mean Cambridge probably has a much more science heavy focus than a lot of other unis which sort of I enjoy because I've always really loved science so for me that's like a good thing. Um, yeah, they're probably like in the first sort of two years, there isn't much clinical contact, but sort of I don't really sort of have a problem with that because it kind of makes up for it in the next three years, which sort of talking to clinical students, they really enjoy and is sort of a really great opportunity. But like also last summer, I kind of I spent a month placement in sort of a um, in a sort of clinical um, in a sports medicine clinic which John's helped me find so that's sort of a really great thing about John's is that professors will help you find something so if you want to do sort of clinical stuff you have the opportunity to do that in your holiday and it was sort of nice to kind of because I did it in something that we would learned about that the year so I could use that but again it's not sort of compulsory. Um, one of the reasons I chose like Cambridge specifically over like Oxford, for example, is that they do dissection, which not a lot of universities do, which because I want to be a surgeon is sort of really positive for me because it's a, sort of a really you know, unique opportunity to get to sort of um, see kind of anatomy in a different aspect. So I guess I, I mean, I really like the course. So. Brilliant. Thanks. Um, great, so question for everyone now. Um, could you talk us through your sort of standard day, like what a typical day might be like? So we've had quite a lot of questions about sort of the balance between how many supervisions, lectures, seminars you have. So maybe talk us through an average day or like if it's hard to find an average day, maybe an average week. That's okay. So for me, I can say an average day more or less. We'll have two to three lectures in the morning, sadly usually starting at 9 a.m. And then uh, we have lab like three times a week. So um, there are two hours and we have short labs and long labs. 
depending on the day. So for a short lab, you'll do the lab in those two hours and then you're done. And for the long lab, you'll do the lab in those two hours and then you'll have to like finish something at home or write a report. Then we'll go back to college, have lunch or whatever. In my case, some people prefer to stay in the department and do their work there. But I prefer to go back to college, then I have lunch and then I'll work for a bit until more or less 3 p.m., which was my supervision time. And as an engineer, second year, I had three supervisions a week. And for each supervision, I have to do an example sheet. So before the supervision, I'll just look at the example sheet is a sheet with lots of questions that you have to attempt based on the content that you did in the lectures. So I'll just look over them, see what I have to ask. Then I'll have my supervision, which lasts for one hour. And then I'll go back to my room and do some more questions for the next supervision. And then, yeah, I'll have dinner and most days, I mean, I'm from Spain, so I have dinner quite late at like nine, but most days after dinner, I'm done. Like I'll go hang out with my friends or something like that. Yeah, that would be kind of an average day. Obviously, like, like some weeks it changes. We have some projects that like last, like this year we had a project that lasted for four weeks. So like you have to stay over and do some stuff in the department, but that's like the average day for first and second year engineering. For me, it's slightly different because I have fewer contact hours. So uh, my average day, I'll usually if I have a, if I have a nine or ten a.m. lecture, I'll I'll wake up for that. But usually, in general, I wake up at around nine. Um, go to my lecture if I have a lecture to go to that morning, uh, and then depending on where, if I was at the faculty or if I stayed in college, I'll go to the library for a few hours before lunch or I do a bit of reading. Um, then after lunch. Uh, I usually cook, so I'll go back to my room, cook, and then after lunch, uh, I'll usually go back to the library to read or to write, depending on when my essays do, because I have one supervision a week, which I have to, I mean, a bit more than that, but on average, about one a week, where I have to hand in an essay for. So I'll do a few days of reading and then a day of writing, usually, so depending on what day it is, I'll do that, or, I mean, either or. Um, and then after around five or six, I'll go back to my room, um, I'll play music for a bit, because I play music, and um, and then in the I'll have dinner, and then after dinner I'll have boxing. So usually from around eight to ten p.m. I'll be at the university sports center, and then come back and go to bed. Repeat. Basically. So I have a, quite a structured day. I'll probably have about two hours of lectures a day, and that two or three hours, and then I might have like a lab or a or dissection in the afternoon. Um, that the section in first year and then just labs this year and then I have about four supervisions a week um so I'll have those kind of in the evening um and then sort of afterwards um I might sort of go to hall um hang out with friends um so uh, we generally get it's much sort of you get you'll get maybe one or two essays a week to write but and kind of a lot of the other time is just going through lectures and kind of pre-reading and post-reading for Sort of next Brilliant, thank you. Um, a question that's just come in, um, how much time do you spend in the library? Um, it depends on the day, I think, uh, and it depends how I've, so I have an essay every week, usually I try to read, um, I give myself about three, three days to do the reading for that essay. It depends on the subject and, and the topic. Some require more or less reading, but um, usually I say on average, if I'm really rushed and I'm late for my work, I'll, I'll maybe spend like a solid five, six, to eight hours in the library in a day. But that's like if I'm really behind in work. Usually it's more about like three, three to four hours per day. Um, I think if, if you're consistent in your work and you do manage to do those three to four hours every day in a the library, then you're fine. Um, I don't always manage to do that, so sometimes I have days where I have to cram a bit more. Um, but that's just because my organization is sometimes a bit um, here and there. But it, yeah, that's just my problem. But on average, don't worry too much about that. And the library is really nice too. We have like I, over 30 different libraries in Cambridge, so like you can always choose which one you want to go to. I mean, you don't usually go to other colleges' library because every college has one. But like you can go to the UL, which is the university library. You can go to all the libraries that are on the um, like in the faculty site, so you can go to like to the different faculty libraries, and then you can go to the college library, which has all the books and space you need to. So you can always change your work environment too. For me, none because I don't work in the library. No, I'm joking. 
were ten in my room. Uh, probably, yeah, three or four. Like, I mean, that's probably like a rush day because I have lots of more contact hours than Tim, so those count as well. So, like, but on average, maybe like two to three. Yeah, I'd say it'd be two to three, and then maybe exciting, like, you know, five or six on the weekend to kind of get work done. I mean, it really depends on how much work I've done and, like, how efficiently I'm doing it. Great, thank you. Um, what would you say is the best thing about your course? For mine, um, it would either be the labs, like, all the like we get to like build all sorts of stuff design like there's all sorts of competitions that's like my favorite everything to do about engineering or like in terms of applications like the fact that it's general engineering so you get to like do all types of engineering and then specialize in the third year like i'm specializing next year and it's on something completely different than what i had applied like in other universities you have to apply for a certain type of engineering i had applied for mechanical engineering and there's no way i would want to do mechanical engineering right now so yeah, that was very helpful for me to actually like learn what i liked about engineering I think for, for my course in humanities in general, I mean, what I like the most is being able to focus on the things that you like and are, yeah, that interest you the most. So you have a set choice of papers that you can choose from um, throughout the years, but then even in the papers, you get to choose which topics you want to write about, which topics you want to read about, um, and which topics you're going to like revise for your exam, basically. So the fact that um, you really get to focus on the topics that you find most interesting uh, and you have the freedom to really choose whatever you want, um, makes, which makes your, your, your Cambridge degree quite unique. Um, I think that that's what I like most. Um, I think I like, like the stuff I most enjoy studying is the stuff that you kind of can see how it's directly relevant to when you will become a doctor and I guess to me the whole point of doing medicine is to become a doctor. So. The stuff that I really enjoy learning about is when you kind of are sitting in a lecture and you're like, oh, I might use this in a couple of years' time. That's great, thank you. Um, we've also had a question about how you guys have found the transition to online learning um, last term in particular, um, just how you found it. Well, I mean, I think on a science subject, taking into account we have like lots of more contact hours is really hard. Obviously we've had no labs this term. Supervisions are also a bit tricky because we usually like work on paper or on the boards and like we write stuff, which, but, which has become a bit trickier, but we've managed. And like exams have been fine. Uh, lectures, like they were recorded, sometimes in like a much more concise, um, form which was very helpful so it was good it's obviously not ideal but we all know that but it was good yeah I think it was slightly different for me I didn't feel the impact of online teaching too much um, the only difference was that my supervisions and lectures were online um, I think like I could be nitpicky saying that the lecturers didn't really know how to film video as well as like a, a YouTuber does. But apart from that, I think that the content was the same. Um, my supervisors were fine because we don't even, we don't really have to look at papers together. I just sent my essays over beforehand, and then I get feedback over what kind of person. Um, obviously, it's not ideal because you're not in Cambridge, and the working environment was very different here at home with my siblings and my family and my friends distracting me. Um, but I think that was the main issue. It wasn't online teaching per se, it was more the fact that I wasn't in John's room, um, which made it a bit harder for me to work and revise patiently. Yeah, I mean, most of our lectures are finished by third term, so we didn't actually have that many this term. Um, but it was kind of, I mean, I found it a bit weird doing term supervisions over Zoom, but kind of everyone reacted. And like, as Tim said, I think it's more sort of the work environment from being at home than actually the sort of content itself. Thank you. Um, so sort of moving back to pre-COVID times sort of more generally, um, is Cambridge what you expected it to be? It's much better than I expected it to be. 
like I came here like of course I want to go to Cambridge it's such like a good academic institution but it's actually so much fun as well the people are great I was scared about like I was like oh my god is everyone just going to be like having all this like super like smart discussions about such hard topics and like I had this like stigmas as well but no it's, it's so much better it's lots of fun I mean I wouldn't want to be anywhere else yeah, I, would agree. I came in. I came to Cambridge. I'd never been before, so I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I came from my interview, but apart from that, um, never. And I think I was almost expecting everyone to be super nerdy and to like not have any social life, and and it's complete opposite. Like I came here and I was like, "What is this?" Like, it's it's so much fun. Like people here, um, they all have their like academic niches and stuff that they're really interested about, <coughs> interested in. Sorry, but they're also really social. They have like everyone here does something and has really some, something really interesting to talk about and is just really interesting in general. Um, and there's so many, so many societies and social things that you can get involved with here, it's crazy. So I think, the, um, yeah, it has by far exceeded my expectations. Yeah, I don't really think I have anything to add. It's kind of what Kim and Campbell have said. I don't really, I didn't, I didn't think I really knew what to expect, but it's been like a really great experience. Great. Um, what would you say is the best thing about college? I reckon it would be like, you mean about like our college or about life in a college? Um, either. <laughs> well, about life in a college, it would just be like living with your friends. Like, I don't know, I live like 10 meters from Tim like this kind of stuff, like just being able to like check up on a friend or go see them at any time. And from our college, I reckon it would be like either the location or like that everyone is living like together, like in the college or very close by. So like you never get sent really far away from your friends. I think what makes John's um great college is yeah the, the location the fact that it's big and everything but i think the culture is really what makes it different um so uh, especially this year as jcr reps we really interacted with people that were like fellows and the master and people working at high level in the college and they're so like they, they really care about the students um and it shows and and the fact that, and that really like you, you feel the effect of that in on a day-to-day -day basis in college life um there's so much support for students here everyone at all levels in college is really welcoming and, and cares about you and your well-being um and i mean i'm sure all colleges have support systems that are great and effective but having interacted with other jcr reps too i know for sure like that john's is really lucky with the people who are managing the college and taking care of us because they really are um like student oriented and i think that's what it says it as well yeah i mean for me it's got to be like the people and just walking through college and like running into sort of people that you might not be very close friends with but just being able to sort of stop and talk to them and have a conversation and just yeah it's just like how friendly everyone is and how willing they are to help you which i'm sure is true about other colleges but i don't know from experience um is there anything that you wish you'd known about cambridge before you applied mm -hmm. I guess I, I wish I would have known, um, I mean, yeah, I guess that it was a lot of independent teaching. Uh, I mean, yeah, independent teaching, uh, learning, because I wasn't really expecting that. I mean, I didn't know what to expect really teaching wise, but I, I came from a school where I had lots and lots of contact hours. So coming here with very few um, was a bit of a shock for me, um, but it's something I got used to quite quickly. But yeah, I guess maybe that, um, I can't think of much else though. It's good to come to a place that you have lots to discover about too, so. I don't know, I guess, I guess I would have liked to know like how like supportive the environment actually is. Like it's not just about competing with others and stuff or being the best, no, like everyone is there to like help you out and no one really cares that much about like who does best and what you get and stuff. Well, I mean, for me, I guess maybe that like 
there's so much more to sort of university than just the academics and that there is just so much that you can do at Cambridge if you want to get involved and that it's sort of the reputation of just being like really academic just isn't true and you can just get involved in as much stuff as you want to. Great, thank you. And finally, what is your top tip for prospective applicants? I guess be yourself and that like when you're writing your personal statement when you're at the interview sort of don't lie and make stuff up that isn't true because it will really come across especially like if you are interviewed because it sort of just isn't you and you kind of want to sort of show them that like you sort of belong in Cambridge and part of the interview process is to see that like the supervision system actually like suits you and sort of just kind of be yourself you know don't I mean you obviously probably will be nervous but like try to just focus and kind of you know do your best and that's kind of thing you can do yeah i think it's jumping off from that i think being yourself and being like being you is the best thing you can do to the extent that no one else is like you and i think here especially with the interview process they really want to find out what makes you tick and what brings you to cambridge why are you applying for this course um, so that's probably the most important thing i think also don't put too much pressure on yourselves um, like obviously Cambridge, um, some some people really do take it, and you should take it seriously when you apply. But don't don't feel like getting in or not getting in is like a life or death situation. Like it's completely fine. Both it both are completely fine, and you shouldn't pressure yourself too much. Don't feel like it's the end of the world when you reach your interviews. Like if you're too nervous, it'll be harder for you to actually be yourself and and, and shine. So I think yeah, apply and and be yourself. Be as genuine as you can and then kind of see where it takes you yeah I would say kind of the same don't be nervous like I believe you always like end up where you're meant to end up and like for me I think the reason that I got in is because I got to the interview and I was like well this is already like great I didn't even expect this let's just see what happens like I, I thought I had no chance so I wasn't even nervous like I would go up the stairs and see the people like with their feet trembling and I was just there like well this is already too much so don't be nervous and like life is gonna oh, this is a bit topical but like life is gonna take you where you're like meant to be and i haven't met or talked to a single of my school friends that isn't happy at the university that they're in that's brilliant thank you so much um so yeah we're all out of time now so thank you so much um to all of you and thanks so much to everyone who has joined us um live on facebook as well Okay, great. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.